from April 29, 2011 at the Curious Comedy Theater. The subject, Attack of the Birds and the Bees. I have good news, people. Spring has sprung. I have proof. The sun was out for, I think, two hours straight. That's spring in Portland. It, kill, it comes on like this. I'm telling you, just get ready. Get your sunscreen out. So the other day, I left my house. There was not one thing blooming in my yard. Nothing. It was barren. I ran errands for about three hours. When I got back, those yellow flowers that came out, the harbingers of uh, springtime, they were in my garden. They were in my planter boxes. There was a couple of brave souls in the middle of my lawn. You know what the ones I mean, the yellow ones? They... <laughs> Dandelions, I love those. I picked some. They just uh, gotta have them in the house. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. You know, the other thing I love about spring, and perhaps you'll join me in this, is springtime is Mother's Day time. Yeah. So if you're not already talking it up big at your house, you need to get, you know, none of this being subtle, hoping people will remember it. My house, we celebrate Mother's Day Eve. <laughs> we celebrate Mother's Day. We celebrate post-Mother's Day. <laughs> Last year, I had an unsatisfactory Mother's Day. We had a do-over Mother's Day the next weekend. <laughs> yeah, the kids are trying a little harder, a little harder this time. Oh, gosh. I'm just hoping, hoping, hoping the thing I've been asking for for years now for Mother's Day, I'm hoping this is my year. You know, every year, I say to my husband, this, he says, what do you want for Mother's Day? I go, you know, what I, I mean, same thing as last year, same thing as the year before, you know, and I, I think this is gonna be my year though, because when I told him again what I wanted for Mother's Day, he said to me, and I quote, there's no way in hell I am getting that for you, it would make my life misery. <laughs> but I'm in sales, so what I heard was, maybe. <laughs> it could happen. Yeah, I remember last year I came down Mother's Day morning and I thought, oh, I got up first. I just knew. I knew I was going to have it. I went right to the kitchen. Nope. But then I thought, well, where would you put this great Mother's Day present? Duh, laundry room. Hello. So I went down in the laundry room and living room, no. Bathrooms, no. Yeah, it was another year with no sister wife for me. <laughs> I just need a little bit of help, that's all I need. Oh, gosh. But hey, with spring, starts, you know, thinking about romance. That's the birds and the bees theme tonight. How many people here heard the talk from your mom? Oh, you are kidding. Nobody heard the talk, birds and the bees? I did. Okay, so uh, perhaps I didn't mention, I can't hear. With these lights, I can't see. Did anybody's mom? Just me, okay. I got the talk from my mom, and I was so sure she was making that up. That just couldn't be right. No. So I was trying to, I was trying to active listen her, I guess, and I, and I said, okay, so let me get this straight. You have to do that thing to have children. Yes, honey. So you have three kids. Yes, honey. Oh, God. So you and Dad did that thing three times. <laughs> and my mom goes, no, no, you're still not getting it here, sweetie. We did it more than three times. I was like, four times? <laughs> How many times? I mean, you have to do it like two times, six times? She goes, no, more, more than six times. And I was like, I don't understand. I mean, how many times do you have to do that horrible thing to make a baby? And she goes, honey, Dad and I have done that thing many times, thousands of times. And I was just like, <gasps> Mom, why? And she goes, honey, because it's fun, okay? <laughs> I was traumatized, man. When I told my daughter about the facts of life, I told her the truth. Yeah, none of that. A little slow, but I don't Oh, gosh. You know, and the other thing when I... Uh, told my daughter the talk. I wasn't, I was all prepared for the talk, you know, when I gave her the news, but I wasn't prepared for some of the responses. I mean, the ew, yuck, yeah, okay, I was ready for that, but um, when she said to me, okay, so mom, how is that fair? Why do the women have to do all the work? And I go, well, you know, it's true that the women throw up for 12 weeks, and then your ankles start to swell, and 
you get increasingly fat, you have to go to the bathroom every half hour. By the end, you can't wear your jewelry and you're miserable constantly. And then you go to the hospital and you're in labor from anywhere from eight to 48 hours in the most wretched pain you can imagine. <laughs> but honey, it, ha it has to be that way. And she goes, well, <laughs> I go, honey, if the men had to go through that, we would be extinct by now. <laughs> it has to be that way. Oh, gosh. But I had, to, I had to defend her dad. I mean, he was right there with me the whole time. I said, you know, it's not like the men are totally out. I mean, one, they have to listen to us complaining that whole time. Right? That's fair. And I said, you know, when you were born, your dad was there the whole time. It was 20-some hours. He was there. He was there. He supported me. He was there. I mean, not, you know, physically there because he had to eat. I mean, 20 hours is a long time. And <laughs> check voicemail a couple times. And... TV wasn't working that well in the room, but he was there, he was there, Lindsay, I tell her. Oh, gosh. After she was born, I'm trying to show her, you know, you just change your whole life. I said, honey, it's just so special when you become a parent, you can't even imagine. It's like your whole world changes and you just become a softer, nicer person. You Not only do you just want to nurture and love your own baby, it's almost like everybody's baby is, is special to you and I, I you know you just you see the world through rose colored glasses I, I just you just love their kids so much you know and I told her that like four times and she just couldn't relate until I said you know what I am totally nurturing now and if you don't believe me I'm gonna smack you upside the head <laughs> so then she got it she understood what I was saying <laughs> oh gosh but when she was born I'll never forget it my husband held her in his arms and he was looking at me. And he was just looking at me, he was just all this love and gratitude. And he just says, oh, his voice kind of starts to shake. He says, oh, thank you. He's got this beautiful baby. He goes, thank you. And then I swear to you, he goes, oh, thank you, God, for making me a man. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.